this up for yeah. Oh, this is good? All right. Am I loud and clear? Yeah. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, before I would like to start, uh, you know, I was listening to the kids and uh, there are a couple of young girls also here that I would like to share one thing about praise and worship. Have you ever seen lepers? Have you ever seen a leper? He has no fingers. You know, there was a boy, uh, this is a story that I read, that he wanted to play instruments to praise God, but he never had fingers. And you know, every time you remember this word that I'm telling you, when you lay your hand on that guitar, say, God, this is for you. Every note I play, God, is for your glory. You know, do it with that heart and soul. God will anoint you and bless you next. And you know, especially for these girls who are singing here and all the choir group, you know, you should go and sit down in a worship service where they cannot speak. Have you ever been there anytime? Have you ever seen there? You would be in tears, I'm telling you. You would cry. They are trying to shout and open their voices to God. Man, it is so painful. It is so painful. And you are so blessed that you can call and shout unto the Lord. You have to give your best. You have to give your best. You know, I, I expect more. I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, we can do better for God. We all can do better. You all are blessed. You have everything going for you in your lives. Look at those who can't sing, who can't speak, but who want to. And boy, there are people who want to do many things, but they can't do. You guys are blessed. And every time you touch that guitar, or you sing a card, or a note, or anything that you do, say, God, this is for you, Lord. I'm not here to please man, but you, God. I'm not here to satisfy myself or take pride in what I do. But God, this is for you. And then, you know, because when you start singing, the presence of God should come out. When you start singing, I should feel the Holy Spirit and its power. That is what we need to do. That is what God has given us these blessings for. To bring Him down amongst us. God said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them. You know, you have all the power to bring God amongst us. The minute you start singing or you play that note or that card, children, keep this in mind, please. Do it for Lord. Do it for our Savior, our God who's done so much for us. Not for anybody, not for yourself. Don't play it for yourself. We'll never get anywhere. Right? Alright, thank you so much. Uh, how many of you have heard my testimony? I'm sure a lot of people must have heard it. Yeah, uh, because uh, I, I thought I would share this testimony in Telugu, but unfortunately, uh, you know, I was asked to speak in English. English is a little difficult. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding, seriously. Uh, uh, it's, it's much more comfortable for me in Telugu, but. Uh, Praise God. Uh, uh, can I offer a word of prayer before I start? Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, I thank you for this wonderful opportunity, God. Father God, I pray especially every word that I speak, my God. Let it touch your children's hearts. Father, let the truth prevail, Lord, in every word that I say. Father, I am just an instrument, Lord, that you brought forth into this world to glorify your name, my Lord. Father, use me, Lord. I present myself into your hands, Lord. Father, let every word be of yours and not of mine. Let the truth alone prevail and let the light be shown, Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, I ask him prayer. So let us go to chapter uh, Ezekiel, chapter 16, and verse 3, please. How many of you have read the book of Ezekiel? Oh, wow. okay. What about the young kids? How many children have read the Bible here? 
How about you guys there? Have you read the Bible? Yeah. You, you, you. Yeah. Yeah. You did once? Okay. Good. And you? No. Okay. How many of you all have read the Bible? And how many of you have done great things for the Lord? God bless you. You know the word is so mighty and powerful. I was sharing that yesterday. Uh, that what we have and what the world doesn't have is the word of God. You know, it's the word that is everything in our lives. And uh, you know that, what is that boy's name? Who was... Uh, Daniel. Huh? Daniel. Daniel. Daniel, right? The little one? Yeah. Oh, he is awesome. <laughs> he is. God bless you, Daniel. God bless you. You know, that's one, those are one of my favorite verses I was, uh, I, I was very fond of. In the beginning. In the beginning was? The word. The word. <laughs> you know, Vakyamu You know, it is such a beautiful word. That we have the privilege and opportunity to speak the word of God and to do great things by that word. Anyways, uh, chapter 16 and uh, yes. And say, thus saith the Lord God unto Jerusalem, thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite, and thy mother an Hittite. You know, uh, this verse is so true to my life because I was born to a Hindu father. Uh, my father was a Tamil Brahmin, and the mother was a British lady. She was of British origin, and she's blonde. Yeah, but when you look at me, I, I just don't resemble any British, you know, blood or anything. I've take, totally taken up on my father's genes. Uh, yeah, uh, so they were in love. Um, I'll get to that subject love later. Um, you know, this is a very important uh, thing. How many of you are not married here? Not married? Oh, you kids, come on. <laughs> you have a long way to go. <laughs> Alright, um, you know, uh, I always say that my testimony is based on few things. One is forgiveness, one is love, and hope, compassion. You know, these things are so important in everybody's life. When you don't have love, believe me, you cannot survive in this world. When you don't have forgiveness in this world, oh boy, it's the most difficult place to live in. And when there's no hope, it's the end of the world. You know, and when there's no compassion, you just feel like dying. You know, I experienced all these things in my life from a very young age. You know, when my mom decided to marry my father, she made the biggest blunder by not asking God. She made her own choices. She just said, oh, okay. You know, it doesn't matter if I don't ask God whether should I marry this man or he's the right man in my life. It's okay. You know, I know, I know. I know him pretty well. Oh, I've been dating him for so long. I know him. But she was wrong. She was absolutely wrong. And she paid the price. You know, she went all against her family. She left her family for this man and she got married to him. Boy, she, she took a brave step, but it was a wrong step in her life, in her career. You know, when she got married, the first few months were very nice because, oh, my, my, my man, you know, my life is with me, you know, all that I wanted is with me. You know, I'm so happy I found the man that I love. But as days passed by, she was so disappointed with my father. You know, he was the most abusive man. And she was in a state of shock because these things were not told to her. These things were not revealed to her. 
before her marriage. She married him and she came to know later that this guy is a womanizer, is an adulterer, is an alcoholic. Oh man, you name everything in the Bible that a man should not do, my father did. And I'm sure somewhere down the line she must have cried her heart to God and said, God, I'm sorry. But God said, it's too late, daughter. It's too late. You made a choice without asking me. You made a choice. I was always there for you, but you ignored my word. You never had the time and patience to call on me and wait on me. You know, by the time my mother had two kids and I was the third one coming in. I have two older siblings, two sisters. But uh, the whole process for her was very painful. You know, I still remember some incidents when I was pretty young. When uh, my father would bring another woman to the house. You know, all these things my family keep discussing and they keep talking about. And uh, he would do nasty things in front of my mother. And that poor woman, he's saying, she's saying, you know, I have left my all for you for this day. I have trusted you. I have hoped in you. I believed in everything that you have told me before marriage. And this is what you pay me back in return. She suffered. She cried. She went through a lot of pain. She was abused day in and day out. She was beaten up black and blue. She went to hell. You know, she went to hell. One choice that she made changed her whole life. She paid such a big price for that one choice that she made in her life. Boy, that was a big choice she made. And that's why I always tell all you youngsters, when you make choices in life, please, please don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a rush. Wait on the Lord. Hear what God has to say about your choices. Wait on God. It's always worth waiting on God. You know, my mom paid a big price. With all the pain that she endured, she felt sick. She was traumatized, you know. I still remember an incident where my father, you know, was so drunk and he'd come and say, I want more money to drink. And she would say, no, I'm not giving you any money. And uh, he was beating her so much, she went out. And he chased her on the streets with a belt. And we were running behind my mother. Boy, what a sight for any child to see. What a sight it was, I'm telling you. That poor woman, I'm glad she was no more. I don't know how much more she would have suffered if she would have been alive. She died of cancer. I was about five years old when my mom passed away. I was pretty young. And uh, I, I always, like, you know, most of the time when, uh, until I got really close to God, and uh, I used to always say, God, you know, why me? I always longed for motherly affection. I always wanted to have a mother. Every time I used to go to my friend's place and see that mother holding their children, you know, and I used to cry and say, God, why me? I want my mother back. You know, I, I prayed, this was my prayer to God. God, I want my mother back. I prayed for so many years for this prayer. I said, God, I want my mom. But, well, you know, once it's gone, it's gone. That's why I'm telling you, when you have it, you cherish it. You hold on to it. Don't waste the opportunity that you have. For all you children you who have mothers and fathers, believe me, you have the best blessing on this earth. The best blessing in this world that you could ever ask for is your mother and father. For without which you wouldn't have been what you are today. You know? So, I've never experienced the affection of a mother and I always, I still long, you know that? I'm married, yeah, but I still long for an affection. I'd love to be by my mother and experience that love. I miss all those things, all you children are experiencing today. You know, all that great affection that you people are enjoying. Man, you are blessed. God bless you all. Thank you. Um, so she passed away, and then my dad, he took us, I was born in Wysak, and um, we moved from Wysak 
to Hyderabad to live with my daddy's brother, his elder brother. And uh, he left us at his brother's place and uh, he moved to Muscat uh, because he found a new job there and uh, he wanted to start a new living. So uh, we were too young so we, we would not know, you know, uh, whether that was the right choice or not my father made. But uh, that taught us a lot in life. When we landed at my father's brother's place, we experienced, uh, you know, what it is being disowned. I have a family and yet I don't. I have relatives, but I have no love, no compassion. You know, I always say this, Santa Vidalu, Santa Vidalu, Santa Vidalu, Parai Vidalu, Parai Vidalu. Kani, Devudi Yantha Gopavad and Te Manalanti Parai Vidalu and Santa Vidalu and Pichkuna Yantha Gopa Devudi Yantha Gopa Devudi. Hallelujah. You know, it's such a wonderful God. You know, I've always felt like a stranger in my father's brother's house. Me and my sisters, we were, we were humiliated. We, were, we went through so much of pain, so much of humiliation. You know, there were times, you know, when as soon as their children come, obviously the first preference is given to their children and later to us. They would eat first and then we would eat later. There were so many things like this that, you know, we experienced. And 